Hello everyone, Shadefire here, and welcome to this little revisiting of Metroid Prime, which as I said in the Prime 2D demo, I wanted to revisit anyway, so I'm going to be playing through this. Now, this is the Prime Trilogy version of Metroid Prime, and it's running on a specialized branch of Dolphin called Prime Hack, which, as you might expect, is there just to get Prime games running better. Now, this isn't the best looking version of the game because there is actually a really nice HD texture pack for just Metroid Prime, which you can install in the trilogy version, so you either get free aim with the mouse controls and the other kind of nice fixes, or you get nicer visuals. But I think that Metroid Prime is stylized enough that it really doesn't look bad even in widescreen like this. Anyhow, so this is pretty much the area where the demo takes place. It's after doing the Space Pirate Frigate, that is the tutorial of the game, so it's about half an hour in. But I figured we'd just go through the same section while I'm here before I continue deeper into the game, and kind of compare it for those who are not too familiar with Prime. Also, I like that you can catch the rain on your visor. The visor effects were, they're not like super in your face, well, I mean they kind of are because they're in Samus's face, but you know what I mean, they're not over the top, but they're very nice touch throughout Prime. Like when there's a big flash and you can see Samus's eyes reflecting in her visor. So we need to go to the Chozo Ruins. Now, in Prime 2D, you actually have to go to the Artifact Temple first, which is where you get the power grips in that. And since the power grips aren't a thing in this, you don't go there first. You actually need missiles to even get in, as we'll see up here. I think this is the door. We got these seedlings here. So, after just kind of scanning around a little bit, it seems like they actually did rewrite the stuff in the Prime 2D demo. It's not just one-to-one -one taken from the original games for, you know, the scan visor lore. Blast shield on the store, blocking access. Blast shield is invulnerable to beam weapons. Yeah, we need missiles for that. Which I do believe we actually are supposed to get from the Hive Mecha. So yeah, we should get up to that boss fight, and we'll probably go a little deeper, just because I kind of just want to talk about Prime in general, and I would have done this video, even if there hadn't been the surprise of there being a 2D version of it showing up. Okay, so to get to the Chozo Ruins, we need to go this way. Now, if I do maximum firing speed, you can see that... Your max cap is much lower than the one in the Prime 2D demo, where you can kind of fire as fast as you can click. Saturnine, small iridescent mushroom, typically grows in dank, dark regions. It actually seems like the Prime 2D scans are a lot more verbose than the ones in-game. But I actually don't know if they changed those between Prime and Prime Trilogy, like if they rewrote them. But while I was editing the demo video for Prime 2D, I started to wonder if they had just rewritten the Chozo lore to be about the Prime 2D project. Like, you know, the whole thing was just kind of a metaphor for that. But I guess we'll find out if I scan some of the lore walls and the ruins. where we need to go. Which is a loading screen as well. Sam is looking a little wide there. Something I hadn't really thought about, but I read it while I was kind of browsing through the wiki, is pointing out that where her arms are, like where her kind of shoulders are on the suit, her body would be like super stretched for her to fit into this. Like she'd have super wide shoulders, which... Incoming scan data. Abnormal seismic activity detected. Seismic disturbance at ruins site. Oh, I actually forgot that it kind of gives you a direction. Sometimes. Recorded to launch. 
New Chozo lore, Chozo script translated. The history of the Chozo stretches back into ancient times, so far into the fog of the past that we know not where our ancestors came from. One thing is clear, however. The Chozo who colonized Talon IV made a conscious choice to eschew a civilization of advanced technology. We Chozo chose to live in harmony with nature, guided by the providence of the universe. We believe we will spend peaceful days here and plan to leave our worlds from time to time. So one thing I didn't remember, but apparently this group of Chozo had only colonized this planet like 50 years before Samus got here. It's never been clear if the Chozo are actually extinct or not in the Metroid universe, considering, you know, Samus was raised by them and she's not that old. But I don't think they've ever had a living Chozo. The Chozo ruins. So I guess there isn't a dust storm here. All right. So this certainly doesn't seem to be as tall as the Prime 2D demo area. I'm kind of wondering if I should have set it to veteran because there is a veteran difficulty option as it might be a little too easy with the mouse controls. Ash's way to shrine, that needs missiles. There's a missile expansion, I think that was also in the demo. Object rests at the top of a very smooth inclined slope. Yeah, so I think we need the morph ball to get up there. These leaves appear to be unnaturally dried and withered. I think that's the morph ball right there. Oh no, it's an E-tank. Don't think that was in the demo, but... Again, it's interesting how they have to essentially convert this big open space into a flat plane. So they have to kind of decide what to leave in and what to leave out, or move to another screen. The ledge this object's rest on cannot be reached from this room. This door cannot be opened, can only be opened from the other side. Like, I actually do enjoy scanning everything. Generally, when games have this kind of lore, I will read it, because uh, it's interesting to me. The stones appear to have fallen from the walkway above. Okay, well, that's maybe a little unnecessary. So, I think that door over there is the only one we can go in. Man. One thing I definitely remember about Prime is it has such a good soundtrack. I mean, I used a bunch of the tracks from this game and its sequel in the Subnautica First Impressions, or What's Update videos. Because they're just so suitable for alien sci-fi exploration. That's one thing I actually do look forward to about playing Corruption, is that you go to multiple planets, so you get to see whole different worlds there instead of just one. Okay, there's another missile expansion over there. And I think that's a grapple point right there? This grapple point is too far away to use. This tree seems to be weakened due to cellular decomposition. I think I do actually like most of them being shorter, though, instead of having, like, a big wall of text for every falling leaf. Alright, let's actually go inside. Guess there's no war wasps out here. Unless they're all up there. Yeah, those are the hives up there. So we could get up there in the demo or kind of an area similar to that. But I think we need to go in and then back out to get up there. This hallway doesn't look very in harmony with nature. Yep, here's the laser beam eyeballs. Are these organic? Recording to logbook. Ion, immobile organisms entirely composed of ocular tissue, capable of launching sustained energy beams when active. The ion is sensitive to light and will close shut if a bright flash ignites nearby. I mean, overall, I don't remember this game being particularly difficult at any point except for, like, two bosses. 
and one of those bosses is not Meta Ridley. <laughs> War Wasp Hive, primary War Wasp dwelling, only vulnerable to heavy weaponry. War Wasps build their home over existing crevices using whatever materials are close at hand. They carry building fragments back to the construction site with their forelegs and glue them into place with adhesives secreted from their abdomens. So no mention of it being just a queen. Many long years have passed since we Chozo first took root in this land. The passage of time has always been a source of fascination to us. It is the belief of many Chozo sages that the truths of the universe hide within the tumbling currents of time's flow. Even as we search for answers there, however, we find illumination in other unexpected places. We know not how the ability has come to us, but recently many Chozo have begun to sense things beyond the realm of ordinary perception. Strange sights and inexplicable sensations flood our minds, filling us with vision. We take this growing ability to be a sign of our burgeoning harmonization with the infinite. Perhaps finally, the universe's secrets are becoming known to us. Our hippie monastery commune is working. So here's one of those mirror things. Ornate wall hanging with a highly reflective surface. Does not appear important. War Wasp. Airborne insect equipped with a venomous stinger capable of shearing steel. The War Wasp rarely strays far from its hive unless it's pursuing an immediate threat. It attacks with no regard for its own survival, dive-bombing its enemy with Stinger Extended. Fast-working toxins from the Stinger can incapacitate most small organisms. Forgot too that you can... dodge. I can't remember how to do it though. You can like, kinda shift dodge when you're locked on. Okay, so there's a save station here. There was a save station in the demo, I didn't actually go in it in the video, but I did when I played a bit afterwards. I just missed it. There should be a map room near this as well. It's also nice not having to wait for these doors to load, because sometimes they'll stay open for or closed for a long time, and you have to sit there and be like, alright, it's loading. I recognize this. This is the room where I was like, we'll just run through. So we're not too far away from the hive mecha. There's a morph ball tunnel. A small tunnel leads back behind the wall. The width of the opening is approximately one meter in diameter. Like, I like the idea, too, that if you get stuck, you can just start scanning around and it'll be like, oh, maybe you can go in here. Stress points present in the Brinstone wall. Concussive blast may shatter it. That was in the demo as well. I remember I blew that open in the part that I didn't record. Door cannot be opened with that weapon. How far are we on the map? Yeah, okay, it's only one more room till we get to the the totem room. Plasmites. Small insect capable of storing and releasing thermal energy. Plasmites are attracted to sources of heat, thriving on the energy present there. They emit light when hunting, and will expel small bursts of thermal energy when threatened. So I don't think these will hurt you. Unless you start shooting at them. Oh, you're not gonna let me scan the crate and tell me that everyone in the galaxy uses crates? Alright, here it is. I also don't remember this room being quite this crooked. Like, a little bit crooked, but this is pretty slanted. Drainage possesses traces of high-level toxins. Mechanical device appears to be inactive. Life forms detected within hollows of machine. 
appears this item can only be reached by using the elevated bridge. Yeah, so this is the Hive Mecha Boss room. Elevator bridge looks worn but functional. Give me my missiles. Okay, so it is the same shape as it is in Prime 2D. Also, these are a different kind of war wasp. These are ram war wasps. Airborne predator circles its prey and then strikes. The war wasps are the only species on Talon 4 to evolve a true hive mind. Nesting in damp, dark places, ram war wasps emerge in small groups when threatened and circle their enemy at high speed, disorienting it. Striking from all sides is a single intelligence that can fell huge organisms. Okay, so that's why they travel in formation. This device is emitting a high frequency signal. This may be the cause of the war wasp swarms. Okay, that's the mouth itself. Mechanoid Hive Mecha, security unit programmed to work with the predatory hive dwellers. A design flaw makes the shielding on Hive Mecha weak around the access ports. These units are second generation combat drones, able to interface with organic units at a high level. They train, shelter, and work with hive dwelling predators. Unarmed, they rely on their hive beast to handle any threats. So I think the flamethrower drone I was thinking of is actually a different boss later in the game. I think that might appear in Magmor. Yeah, I don't remember how to... I was doing it when I played earlier. There it is. Okay, you have to kind of be holding to the side hard to do the dash. Not going to do me much good on this little platform. I'm just watching the radar until one of them stops. Not nearly as many of them as there was in the Prime 2D boss fight. <laughs> so I don't remember if it has a second phase. I guess not, because we just got a pseudo-achievement. Missile launcher. Okay, so it's not a missile expansion, it is actually the launcher. A to switch back to beams, missiles can destroy some blast shields on doors. Okay. So yeah, just hit F to fire a missile, which is pretty handy. And I want to go back quickly, grab that other missile stuff before we continue. I don't remember exactly what you do after you get the missiles. There's a lot of stuff I don't remember in this though, like I totally did not remember that this game had beam combos, where you charge up your whatever beam you have equipped, and then if you fire a missile it does a specific type of attack. Like, the regular charge beam gives you super missiles, which is mandatory, but there's like flamethrowers and stuff too. Unfortunately, I can't actually get the missiles and stuff. But yeah, that stuff is the reason you want those missile tanks, because the combos use up a lot more missiles than just the basic one. Is there... is this the map room right here? Yes, it is. So I suppose you don't have to activate them, they just don't work in the demo yet, because presumably they don't have the whole map in there. Alright, so this is the map of the Chozo Ruins. 
it's a fairly large area, and a lot of it you can't actually get to yet. Like, that big dome room there? Not really a spoiler to say that that's a boss fight over there that we're not going to get to anytime soon. Okay. So this really does feel good to play. Like, I'm using the default control scheme for Prime Hack, but it does seem like the right <laughs> control scheme for mouse and keyboard control. So if you want to play it that way, I would recommend this with my experience with it so far. And like, all of the binds are fairly convenient, like to switch to the scan visor, you hold E and press 1, and to switch beams, I think it's just the number keys. I can't test it until I have one. Uh, the grapple beam, which was at the start of the game before you lose all your abilities, that's just shift. So yeah, this stuff seems to be pretty good. Nope. Don't need that, I need this. Energy tank. So this is where the demo ended, after you pick up this energy tank. I guess I might need to scan this. I can't remember if these were on the ship. Missile ammunition. So we need the morph ball to go through there. So I wonder. I guess you can't go this way because the demo, there's like a time-space anomaly blocking that. Because I was wondering, like, you can go back and get the morph ball. Can you go through there? But no. They blocked it off. I am looking forward to that project, though. I hope it doesn't actually take them years to finish it up. And that they were... Releasing the demo because they're pretty far along. Man, I don't remember Samus being so fast. Like, you move pretty quick in this by default, as you can see. Alright, where am I going? I'm going back out, but we might as well save while we're here. Just in case I accidentally close the emulator, which I've done a few times, by hitting escape. It's like ingrained in my mind that if I'm playing a game on PC, I can hit escape and it will close a menu. Any menu. Alright, let's uh, figure out where we're going next, because it didn't take us very long to get to boss there. I guess we probably actually have to go to the Artifact Temple now, and we'll get another ability, but I'm not 100% on that. Alright, so what can we do with our missiles now? Okay, so there are war wasps here as well, but they just weren't out until we had fought the Hive Mecha. I didn't even try walking across here earlier. It seems like they kind of switched around the locations of... where the door that leads you to that boss fight is, because I'm pretty sure that this would be kind of equivalent. Also, I feel like there's something right there. Nope. Deflected the hell out of my missile. All right, well, let's see where this goes. It probably leads us to a dead end that we can't get further in right now. Ah, oh, okay, yeah. Need a morph ball there. So, I'm guessing... We'll get the Morph Ball if we go back. Okay, we can go this way. And it says this leads to the Shrine, which I'm pretty sure was that big circle. Those guys are pretty much where you go when you need a health refill in this area. <laughs> Come back and shoot the whole group of them. And yeah, 
sense. Another morph ball tunnel. That's a half pipe. That's also a morph ball tunnel. Oh, there's the morph ball. Not more beetles. Are these different beetles? Nope, they're not even different. Couldn't I just jump up there? No, can't get out once I'm in here. That is a new beetle. That's a big O beetle. They really do some tight zooms in this every time you want to show you something. Plated beetle. Well armored burrowing insect. Vulnerable only in the rear abdomen. The creature's thick cranial plating can repel frontal attacks. This gives it an advantage in combat, allowing it to make ramming attacks. Only surfacing when it detects vibrations above, it then maneuvers itself so as to always face its rival, keeping its exposed abdomen protected. Okay, this is also the dash tutorial mini boss. You just wait until it does the swish and then. I think it actually only might take one missile. All right, bladed beetle defeated. Morph ball. I mean, I didn't really need to scan that to know that, but I wasn't sure if that was a research entry. Alright, so now we have the Morph Ball, but we don't have bombs. I mentioned this in the Prime 2D demo as well, but I like that trail you leave behind with the Morph Ball. Because Samus is converted into pure energy when she transforms into the Morph Ball to avoid getting her insides crushed. So, the control for that by default is just control, which again, pretty convenient. So I don't think we can half pipe yet because we don't have the speed boost. Or dashed or whatever. So I don't think he retained enough speed to do this. Stop trying. You don't have the right upgrade. Boost ball required. Alright. Well, now we can take our new morph ball and go back to the hole by the hive mecha. So yeah, that's just your... Pretty typical Metroid progression, you get an ability and you're like, okay, and I now know where to use that because I've already seen a couple places where I needed it. So I guess let's just get to our main, whatever our next objective is, and we'll call that for this revisiting, but I just wanted an excuse to talk about Metroid Prime for a bit before playing more of it on my own. Like I said, I would like to LP the Metroid games at some point, but if I did Prime, it wouldn't be until after I'd done some of the 2D ones. Even though, chronologically, this is pretty early on in the timeline. Like, this takes place before, I think, even Metroid and Super Metroid? Or maybe only Zero Mission is before this, but I know Super Metroid takes place after the Prime series. It's pretty early in the timeline. Um, so to get there, we need to go all the way around. I have heard that Prime 2 Echoes is kind of the Majora's Mask of the series, in that it had a short kind of rush development time, used a lot of assets from the game before it, and had a bunch of weird gameplay ideas and mechanics that didn't return in future entries in the series. And I think that's kind of fair from what I know of... Echoes, and also that it's more difficult and expects you to be somewhat familiar with the game already from playing the previous one. 
So I am looking forward to giving Echoes a real try. Okay, there's another missile expansion there. You can see there's this whole track on the wall, but we need more ball bombs to get through there. I mean, we might actually have to go back to the Artifact Temple. I don't remember if you get something there, aside from it just telling you what your main objective is, which is to find the 12 artifacts so that you can access the Impact Crater. Hold on. Hmm. For some reason, I thought I saw a lower wall here. There is, like, an upgrade behind this wall. You can hear it. Alright, so... Switch to the Morph Ball. I also like that the Morph Ball comes with its own light. So you can see. What would the next upgrade be? Probably Morph Ball Bombs, honestly. I can't think of what else it would be. Morph Ball is pretty much one of the most basic abilities you have. I mean, in the original Metroid, you get it within, like... 30 seconds of starting. Okay, this leads to Magmore. I do remember that. Unless I'm wrong. It does lead to Magmore. But I don't think we can go there, because we don't have the Vario suit yet. Magmore has a really good track, too. Most areas have a good track. I can't remember anywhere where I was like, eh. Whatever, this track isn't great. Maybe the Phazon Mines? But, like, Fendrana, Magmoor. The Metroid series as a whole has had pretty good soundtracks all the way through. The future is a vague thing, ever-changing and always in doubt. Even if we Chozo could gain the ability to foresee the future, it would be a hollow gift for we could never hope to control what has yet to occur. The fountain is an example of this. The day may come when its water dries up, and there is nothing we could do to stop such a tragedy. But we do know this. Unlike the uncertain flow of water, the power of our will is strong and enduring. The will of the Chozo will never run dry. At least until we all die out, or become ghosts. It's not entirely clear that they did die out here. Appears to be the first of three locking mechanisms that seal the gate. The lock is active, but its key slot is sealed by a weak metal grating. Not that kind of weak metal grating. And what's in there? Just a missile expansion? Yep. These metal gates block entry to the center of the route. So I think we need more fall bombs for that. We got a large room coming up. Oh, that's back where we came from. This is where that expansion we saw is. Another E-Tank? Like, once you get a couple E-Tanks, really the only thing that you have to worry about dying it to is those bosses that do, like, almost an entire tank of damage in one hit. Which, to be fair, Metroid games are not that short on. Also, is there any other reason to go back here? I guess I can go to Magmoor. I might only need the Varia suit in certain parts of Magmoor. This video is in danger of also getting too long because this is a game that I can just keep playing and keep talking and then suddenly it's an hour and a half long. I know some people don't mind that, but I like to keep it a little short, especially when I then have to edit it and render it. Because you would not believe how long a hour and a half long video takes to render at even the not super high settings that I'm using. Like, I can't even imagine rendering at 4K because, you know, it takes like five hours for an hour and a half video, so how long would that take in 4K? 
But most people who, you know, release videos like that, they have a separate rendering PC specifically so they can just leave it running while they're doing other stuff. The cries of this dying land echo in our ears as we Chozo watch the great poison sweep ever further into the living pulse of the planet. The dark energy sinks into the trees and waters, devouring all life. Peaceful beasts die by the thousands. Some creatures survive, but their forms grow as twisted and evil as the force that fell from the sky. Many of these mutated monstrosities remain small enough to do little harm, but others grow enormous and threaten our very existence. One such beast defiles our sacred fountain, disgorging poison from its foul form, replacing pure flowing water with cascades of creeping death. Even in the face of such horror, we Chozo do not turn in fear. We are all that stands in the way of this great poison, and it is our duty to contain it. Unfortunately for us, we've also taken a vow of eternal peace, which I think applies to all Chozo and not just these Chozo. The Talon Chozo. Okay, this needs a spider ball to roll up. So that, I believe, leads to the great beast they were talking about, which is the main boss of the Chozo ruins. So let's go to Bagmore. There's always got to be a hot place in a Metroid game, as well as a cold place. Shriek Bat, Territorial Ceiling Dweller. Body temperature peaks at 121 centigrade. Shriek bats have high internal temperature, making them easy to spot with thermal imaging. And there is a thermal visor in this game. They roost on cave ceilings while hunting for small prey. Fiercely territorial, they dive bomb anything that wanders near. I think there's a thermal visor and an x-ray visor on top of your scan and regular ones. save station. I'm trying to remember which Metroid games had a missile station that was separate from the save station. I think that is the, most of the 2D ones. You have to actually go somewhere that just replenishes missiles, but could be wrong, that could just be just fusion. Alright, now the actual track is kicking in as we're getting into the lava zone. Grisby, subvolcanic carrion feeder, carapace can be breached by missiles. Grisby's carapace has been fused together by superheated air. This barrier stands up to everything but concussive blasts. Its intelligence is limited to instinctive scavenging patterns. Yeah, I can't go any further. Need the various suits, so now I think I'm forced to go back to other areas. Since there doesn't seem to be any other doors here. But hey, it's good to know that uh, we can get to Magbor from here. Again, that's just a very Metroid thing to find a new area, you go in it, and then you're like, oh, I guess I can't be here yet. But now I know that it's here, and I know what the danger is, so when I find a upgrade that is relevant, I can come back. Oh no. The real challenge, this friggin' elevator where they're kind of out of sequence. Okay, we get on here, and then we jump onto that one when this one is going up and that one's going down. Since we can't double jump. Can I actually make this jump? I feel like the height is not there. 
there something else I can jump on? Maybe that thing? Oh no. I'm gonna be trapped here by this elevator. I think I can go here. Nope. Slid right off that time. It looked so close. Like, I feel like these are almost in sequence. Hmm. I don't think there's another way out of here. Unless I just have to run through the heat zone. Welcome to the part where I end the video because I die for a really stupid reason. Which is I don't remember how to get out of Magmor. <laughs> okay, well it doesn't drain that quickly. Oh no, it's getting hotter. This is like the warning heat room and then the other one's like, okay, if you made it this far, you're going to die. I know, I've seen at least one person be like, I don't like the Prime Trilogy version because they made it so you can't sequence break, so I'll only ever play the original version of Prime. Which, like, is that really that important? If you're replaying the game, but you're like, I just want to skip through it as quickly as possible. Like, I know sequence breaking has kind of been ingrained in the series since you could do things like the uh, wall jumps in Super Metroid. I feel like I'm missing something here. Okay. I don't know why that sequence didn't seem to line up <laughs> last time. That was weird. I guess if I waited long enough, it eventually would have matched up again. Alright, so I know I said that we were going to end the video when I got to the next main thing, but we kind of haven't gotten to the main next thing. But yeah, I think we'll go back to the Artifact Temple and end it there, because we haven't been going too long. I think. It's probably actually been like an hour and I just don't realize it. I'm just having fun, you know? I like this game still. I do think it holds up pretty well. And that doesn't really need that visual upgrade, like I said. Uh, this leads back out, right? Where's the main room here? Yeah, that's the main room there, so this is a shortcut. I think I wedged it by getting too close. Also, I feel like it's not clear in the 2D games, but her morph ball is really goddamn big. Like, this is probably at least up to someone's torso, the size of this thing. Anyhow. Expect to see a bit more Metroid stuff in the near future. There's a couple of games that I hadn't played that I wanted to take a first impressions look at. I mean, you know, Echoes and Corruption eventually, but that won't be until after I finish Prime here. I just wanted to do this video, you know, while I was still at the start before just diving into it and playing a couple hours every night. Um... Wasn't there another morph ball tunnel here? Over here. I'm gonna go around for that. But like, Hunters, I've heard, is actually not bad. The DS game. It's also first person like this, but... First person 3D on a DS, which was a little janky. Some games tried it, not a lot. But I've heard it's actually not a bad game. And of course, we can't look at Metroid Prime without checking out Metroid Prime Pinball for the DS as well. Making the best use of the system. And I say that at, like, 
Pinball is one of those things where I'm interested in it. I've just never really, you know, by the time I was a kid, there were still arcades, but pinball was more of a, a niche thing by that point when video games had replaced physical or analog arcade games. No structural weaknesses detected in the metalwork, but there's a spider ball track leading in there. The surges of negative energy brought by the meteor far exceed our expectation. We chose of yet to find a way to rid ourselves of the great poison. All we can do now is seal it away and wait for the day when a power to purify the poison appears. However, it is already impossible to collect the pieces of the great poison as it has already spread, seeping into the planet and hardening. Fountain choked by overgrowth, toxin levels are high, so until we kill the source of the toxins, we can't get this stuff. Toxicity levels critical, contact with the contaminated water extremely hazardous. But yeah, like I said, on the LP front, we'll probably see... Metroid Zero Mission, not too long from now. It's not a super long game. It's the port or remake of the first Metroid for the Game Boy Advance. And then from there, probably Super Metroid or AM2R. I guess AM2R slash Return of Samus slash Metroid 2 take place. Okay, we can't go in there without the Varia suit either. And I think that's also a grapple beam room. They take place before Super Metroid. I actually wouldn't mind taking a first impressions look at uh, Metroid 2, Return of Samus, you know, the, the Game Boy sequel. Because it is kind of limited and janky as most Game Boy original game ports were, or, you know, continuations. I recognize these guys from Deep Rock Galactic. Reaper Vine, powerful rock dwelling tentacle. A single eye upon the Reaper Vine keeps a constant vigil, but its vision is limited to 10 meters. A scythe like appendage on its tip is honed to lethal sharpness. The Reaper Vine will swing this blade wildly at anything that enters its zone of perception. I remember this room too. A big old tree. I think there's a couple things we can get in here. I think it'll be fun to do a blind LP of Super Metroid, though. Like, I don't know too much about that. I probably recognize a decent number of the bosses now, just from reading the wiki and whatnot, but definitely don't know all of them. And while I'm still in this uh, Metroid kick, I might also do a Till First Death video on... A robot named Fight, which is, if you've never seen that, it's kind of a roguelite of the 2D Metroids. Like, it plays like a roguelite Super Metroid kind of thing, gameplay-wise. You go around, you collect upgrades in a variety of randomly generated zones, and then you fight a final boss. And it has a nice thing to keep the variety high, where... It has Metroid-style upgrades, where it's like, oh, you need electricity to open this door, but then there's a bunch of different upgrades that will have that attribute. So it's like, oh, sometimes you get missiles, sometimes your shots just do explosive damage, or you get some other kind of sticky bomb secondary weapon. So there'll be a bunch of rolls you require, but which actual tool you get to fill those rolls will change from run to run. And I think that's pretty neat. It's also a game made by, like, two people, and the dev has put a lot of love into it, even after release. So I want to do at least a Till First Death on that, if not more than one. Alright, well, now that I'm just kind of doing exploration work, I guess, maybe it's a good time to wrap up this video. But I hope you enjoyed this, uh, little bit of time revisiting Metroid Prime, and are interested in future visits to the series. But until then, you all take care.